Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today we are talking about argumentation, that process of butting heads with people around you to get things the way you want or at least some kind of compromise. Yeah, argumentation has to do with direction, with management of resources, and yeah, people are to some extent a resource. So in this process you use one of four different styles to ensure that you get what you want and one of these styles is going to be you want your comfort style, the style that you most naturally engage in and the style that gives you the most passion, power and energy. So it's important to recognize that in this video. What do I enjoy the most? What per style do I prefer? And what do I get the most out of? And this video I hope will blow your mind. Yeah, that's right. Boom. So the, what I've identified is that there are two different styles of argumentation. First there is the conclusive style and then there is the argumentative style. Yeah, some people like to focus on their conclusion, the verdict of an argument, where other people like to focus on the argument behind the conclusion or what drove the, you to reach a certain verdict. That basically means that you are either spending time trying to find the right argument to get people to listen to you, or you are trying to find the right conclusion to get people to agree with you. And in general, that creates two different styles. And I tend to say that the feeling and judging style is much more argumentative, where the thinking and judging style is much more conclusive based. Now, there are some subversions of this, and I will say there is a subconclusive style in thinking and perceiving, and there is a sub-argumentative style in feeling and perceiving. And I want to explain about what I mean with this. Now, feeling and judging, that's often about, in people's perspective, harmony. People tend to use and associate feeling and judging with harmony. With thinking and judging, it's often about the system. With feeling and judging, it's often about the people. What do people think? Often the thing I tend to say is I don't care so much about the conclusion or verdict people reach as much as how people reach it and how we attain it. I tend to have a code of conduct, a set idea of how ideals should be advanced, a belief about how we should get to a certain point. And often my conclusion is an argument. What I tend to want is rather than a set instrument or a set result, I tend to want a set quality. I tend to want to achieve peace or harmony or some kind of ideal rather than a result in itself. And that's also a part of what an argument is. An argument is not something you can operate on. You can't build a system or a bureaucracy around an argument. You can't say that the state should operate on giving someone justice. Uh, a state has to have a set of clear conclusions to function. Generally, conclusions are more operative. Basically, you can draw and you can use them to build a program, a system, and a way things work. But with an argument, an argument is much more about a state or a quality or a feeling. And that means feeling and judging is about quality or attaining a certain quality. Now, often what I tend to say about feeling perceiving versus thinking and perceiving is the feeling perceiving is so much about authentication. So often what the feeling and perceiving type will tend to do is authenticate resources. If we're doing and directing people and managing people, what a feeling and perceiving type will try to do is be a reporter of these people. Can I trust these people? Are these good people? Are these nice people? What do these people want? Often a feeling and perceiving type is about gathering information and data on what people think and believe. Getting information on people's arguments and what people have and think. So often feeling and perceiving is a listening function, it's often associated with listening, and it's a quite flexible function. It's in many ways flexible in the sense that it signals openness to what you think and to what you believe. If you believe something, feeling and perceiving is easily swayed. Feeling and perceiving is uh, in so many ways about adapting an argument or about uh, utilizing an argument in a situation. It's about understanding an argument and what it means. Why? 
does a person get angry? What makes the person go angry? What can I do to uh, solve the situation? Feeling and perceiving is so much about responding to conflicts and what people say and to people's arguments. And that's often why I also call it sub-argumentative. It tends to be about intercepting people's arguments and people's beliefs and people's ideas. And it's about what's right in the situation. Based on what I know about what's right and wrong and the people I care about and who they are and everything. What is the right choice in this particular moment? Yeah, perceiving functions, perceiving directing styles are so much about the moment. It's about how you do and apply an idea or a conclusion or a solution in different ways. So if you take the sub-conclusive style of thinking and perceiving, often thinking and perceiving will absorb a system or an idea, a principle, say a principle as you should not kill. Thinking and perceiving will then take it into different contexts. It will put it in a context like the, this present moment. And it will say, what if you were on a stranded island and you had to eat someone else to survive? Is it okay to kill them? Yeah, often the sub-conclusive style is about inter. Uh, or inventing kind of situations or finding out different, testing out different situations and noticing how a conclusion will perform. So sub-conclusive styles are about testing the performance of a system, testing how it works and seeing how it works. So often when you deal with the thinking and perceiving type, they will often have this devil's advocate what if style. So, okay, what if that conclusion you just gave me was used in this situation or that situation? That's how a thinking and perceiving title type deals with the situation. And notice that there is still, it can still appear slightly argumentative because uh, often it's more that the subconclusive style is about offering pinpointing and fixes, quick fixes to uh, make a conclusion stronger. Often, what you want to do when dealing with the subconclusive style is to invent this kind of what if parameter. Well, this conclusion is generally valid, but not in this or that scenario. Basically, what you want to do is write up scenarios and parameters to ensure that your conclusion is as strong as possible in as many situations as possible. But generally, thinking and perceiving does not suggest new conclusions or changes to the conclusion. It does not say, this is the new conclusion you should have, or this is how you should uh, do it. It's more about smaller modifications and pinpoints and improvements. So, thinking and perceiving is all based on what you give it. If you don't give it anything, it won't perform as well. Feeling and perceiving is sub-argumentative, of course, in that sense that it, when you say something like I want harmony or I want peace or I want this state or this quality, often feeling and perceiving will test that out. It's sub-argumentative. So you say you want that, but what about in this situation and what about in that situation? You said that you cared about this or that, but in that situation you did that choice, you took that course of action. So often sub-argumentative uh, sub styles, the feeling and perceiving process is about authenticating what you say. Is it really true that you believe this? Is it really true that you want this? Is it really true that this is what you strive towards? Because I see in this situation and that situation that you're not acting towards or in coherence with your belief. So often that process of wanting people to be authentic, to be real, to act on their beliefs and to do, do in, and act in line with what they say is so important to a feeling perceiving type. You'll note that often a feeling perceiving type will ask and see and test to ensure that you are truly true to your words and that you're actually doing what you say that you are. So you have here this whole um, difference where often you see that I said perceiving functions were adapted to the moment, that judging functions are adapted to the long term or a goal or a long quality or this overall generalization. Uh, where the perceiving function is more about in this particular situation or that particular situation. Often what I tend to find is that feelers are about quality, where thinkers are about quantity. So thinkers are more about operability. When thinkers argue, it's about operation. How can you operate on various different thoughts and beliefs and ideas? And uh, how can you as a feeler experience what another person says or what they do or how they do something? So 
Here it's about pinpointing what is really important to you in an argument. Is it more important to you to achieve a goal or a direct operable definition or is it more important for you to achieve a quality, a set state or a set experience? Is it more important for you to have authenticity, to speak in line with what you feel and to what you believe or is it more important to play the devil's advocate, to test out an idea and to get the best definition possible and to see that the system or the conclusions that you're working with are valid. Here we have, of course, in their worst spot, in the weakest form, also four terrible styles of argumentation or four fallacies you could call them. And here thinking and judging of course is the fallacy of having a generalization, generalized conclusion or a generalized rule that is inefficient. To believe or to say this is the rule which I apply in my life and then to act in accordance with this rule but even though this rule is inefficient and invalid and doesn't work in a lot of situations. Here of course in feeling and judging we have that style of being a hypocrite uh, to have a set belief or have a set ideal but to not understand um, in the sense that you are many times committing uh, and doing wrong, that you are doing it wrong, that this ide ideology, this value that you have is uh, hurting people, that it's self-contradicting and that you are unable to even represent it truly. Here we have in feeling and perceiving this ability to be authentic but to lack a clear ideology or to understand in a longer perspective that what you're doing might cause long-term harm, even if it feels good in the moment. And of course, in thinking and perceiving, we have that idea that just because it sounds rational and because it sounds customized and perfect in this situation does not mean it will hold in further situations or longer perspective. Knowing this, you can also learn to see past some of your argumentation flaws and to become better at understanding other people's viewpoints. It's about learning to embrace what other people say and to make the best out of it. It's also about finding out what style is better for you to start off with. Find your comfort style. Find out which style fits you better and try to stick to it when you can because often it's gonna mean better things for you. It's gonna be easier to use in your daily life. If you're a judging type and you're using this uh, authenticating or subconclusive style, often what you'll find is that you're getting stressed because thinking about these things and constantly having to readjust and to readapt as a judging type that's really stressful. If you are a perceiving type stuck in a judging style of here always needing to have a long-term goal and to always have to operate based on an ideology or to follow narrowly a strict system, that's very stressful because as a perceiving type you need faster closure and you need to feel that you have the freedom to adjust so think, take that in mind and if you found this video about argumentation interesting feel free to leave it a like or a comment down below and thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.